Woo-hoo. All the answers is gonna be either MacGyver or Mr. T. My boobies really are not that big. That sounds dirty. Woo-hoo. Oh, Captain, my Captain. I'm keeping score because I don't trust Jason. <laughs> what the hell am I doing in this show? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Welcome to the Atomic Trivia War 9000. I'm your host, Mr. Hawk, taking attendance this fine evening. I'm a, I'm a cool teacher, though, so you can call me Jason. Let's meet our students. He's hiding a playboy inside that science book in the back of the room. From Costa Rica, he's our class clown, Omar Hernandez. Uh, can I call you Mr. J? Mr. J, I like it. It's, it's something like you would hear on Boy Meets World. <laughs> it's something you would hear in Batman. <laughs> if this were The Breakfast Club... She'd be the Judd Nelson character, but with a Hello Kitty backpack. From Seattle, she's Ro Mantanona. Heck yes! I'm cool! I'm the coolest one! He's flunked three spelling tests this quarter because he keeps on adding A to the middle of his words. From Canada, welcome Kevin Archibald! Hello! I think I'm hot for teacher tonight. Forget Star Wars, forget Evangelion or Brad Pitt, or any of the pop culture stuff we always fixate on. This time... We have to answer a very simple question. While you three have a wealth of useless information about cartoons and video games and movies, when it comes to the fundamentals, are any of you smarter than 8th graders? About to find out. We uh, will find out. I hope so here's I how this is going to work. I've got 21 questions. That's 7 for each of you. They've been randomized using random.org, and you drew straws before the show. It's going to be Kevin Omar Rowe. That's the order that you chose, so you know that the deck, deck is not stacked. And uh, remember, you're getting graded. Okay, are we doing the bell curve or just normal? <laughs> None of that You'll American lucky, school nonsense. <laughs> I do want to say real quick that we have several contributors here tonight. Uh, Josh Bissell, Max Weintraub of Virginia, Jason Mirovitz of Wyoming, Sydney Shilito, and I you know, wrote a couple questions as well. So the really hard ones, <laughs> those are mine, bitches. Fuck Uh-oh. you, Jason. I, know, I need not trust your questions. <laughs> yeah, those are Ohio you? middle schools, you know. They're, they're awful hard. <laughs> are you ready? Gotta find a pen. Not find really. Pen. You know, right. Is there, like, literature and American history okay. in these? Pen. Oh, there are. And I'm going to be giving you, at the beginning of each question, the, the topic that it comes from, or the, the class that it comes from. So, for example, uh, number one, when we start off with Ke- uh, Kevin here, science is what we're going to start with. So, Kevin, I've got my red pen. Science is the topic. What protein in red blood cells is primarily responsible for carrying oxygen throughout the body. What protein? Good gravy grandma. Uh, What protein in red blood cells is primarily responsible for carrying oxygen throughout the body? Wow. Protein. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, 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 guadenine. (laughs) Really? Yeah. Omar, do you have this one? I suspect you do. Hemoglobin? Hemoglobin is uh, the hemoglobin? correct answer. Oh, boo. Nice one, Omar. No point for yeah. Kevin, but it's time for Omar to get a shot at his own question. Also with science. Oh, good. What type of clouds, with a Latin name meaning heap, possess clearly defined edges and generally appear as cotton-like puffs in the sky? Really? <laughs> what type of clouds? Is it Connor McLeod? <laughs> I... I don't think I ever, we ever did this. <laughs> they don't have clouds down there. Okay, okay. There, there's some Latin there. So what's what's the 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 Latin clue part? The Latin name means heap, because they get piled up like heaps, big mm. heaps of cotton floating overhead. I might know this. Yeah, I think I know this. Uh, heap, heap, heap. Pila, pila, pilus. So I'm gonna say. Pilus. I think I'm going to let Ro have a shot at it. Is it cubulonimbus or something like that? It's just cumulus. Oh, cumulus nimbus, yeah. Okay. Just uh, cumulus. You know, it's really sense. interesting. I, I ran that question by Andrew earlier because I was testing a few out to see, you know, whether they within, were within the reach. And uh, he made the same mistake. He went cumulonimbus. I think everybody likes having that flow together because, yeah, it is kind of like a like a Harry Potter type spell. It's also in the Joni yeah. um, Joni Mitchell song. Um. I'm just gonna say that that's like a fourth grade question. So <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> fuck that. 
<laughs> Fuck your fourth graders. As a matter of fact, when I was looking through some stuff, I happened to see that on a Department of Education fourth grade test. Whoops. Are you serious? Uh-oh. Yeah. Row, question yeah. number three. It's a math and history c- 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 combo. Math and history. Oh, great. I like math. History, not so much. Okay, well, this one might go right your way then. How many years prior to the Gettysburg Address was the Declaration of Independence signed? Son of a... No, think about it, Ro. It's right there. It's right there in the Gettysburg Address. It tells you. I don't remember the Gettysburg Address. Oh, you know on. the first sentence of it. Canadian. Wait, 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 wait. Four score and seven years ago. 47? No, no, no not 40. Is it? Oh, God. <laughs> four score and... You just need to figure out what a score is. It's four score and seven years ago, right? Right. Okay, four score and seven. A score. So the declaration was 1776. The Gettysburg Address was 18-something. So if it was 47, 47, let's let's add 3, 11, carry the 2, 1, 12, carry another 1. Okay, 8. It's quite the roundabout way to get there. I know. (laughs) Four score... So that'd be around 1823. I don't know if it Did was... you take the square root? The square root? No. <laughs> okay, row, row, think French. Put Pythagoras Think how the French, the French build their numbers. If a train carrying Lincoln's body leaves <laughs> Gettysburg at... <laughs> <laughs> how, do, wait, how do French carry their numbers? Undo, trois, quatre, cinq, six, seven... No, no, the, the higher ones. The, 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 the close, close, to the, 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 close to the... Close to the, the hundreds. Oh my god, I only know one through a hundred... I think that's going to be a dead end, but but we do need to draw this to a close here. This question can't go on for 27 minutes. Four score, so it'd be... <laughs> wow. I'm so, I was going to say 47, but I, that's probably wrong. Yes, it is. Yeah, score is 20, oh, so we would need years. 87. All right, well, we're 0 for 3. <laughs> wow. Hooray. Like the Yay. Frenchies, they say 4 vingt. Cut, Cut, Cut Vaughn. Right. Right, 80. Uh, so we're back at the top of the batting order. We've got Kevin with history. I appreciate you guys getting those wrong for my sake. <laughs> Kevin. Yes, it was totally for that, Kevin. We win as a team, we fail as a team. <laughs> Together we fall, and that's pretty much it. If we were playing Monopoly, sir, this would be like a community chest question for you, because it's perfect for you. Okay. <laughs> The London Conference of 1866 paved the way for the Confederation of what Western nation? Confe- 1866. Uh, wow. The London Conference of 1866 paved the way for the Confederation of what Western nation? Well, the fact that I have... Oh, wow. I have no idea, so I'm going to guess Canada. Yeah, I was guessing that you, you know, would... Have learned about this in school. That you would think so, wouldn't you? But we, we kind of tend to learn of what we do for ourselves, like over here. Never mind what goes on over there. So. Do you have <laughs> Canadian studies? Is that what they would call it? Well, it's called history, my friend. But uh, you know what? In when you get to high school, you can choose sort of two streams of, of North American history. You can choose the Canadian one or the American one. And when it comes to studying, you want to learn the American one because it's way more like interesting you know there's there's battles there's people fighting there's duels there's all that canadian history is all like so and so challenged so and so in parliament at such and such an argument and oh what a jolly <laughs> now now go ahead and ask me which one i would live through i would any day of the week rather live through the canadian history but which one would i rather study i'd rather study american history because you know it, it gets more exciting See, I thought the Canadian history would be far, far more interesting. It's like the Eskimo uprising of 1444 when they rode their polar bears down off the North Pole with the <laughs> Santa Claus's elves in reserve as bowmen. Yeah, that sort of no. thing. We, we had a rebellion. That sounds more exciting. We had a rebellion. It was like ten guys, and that was it. So, <laughs> and then there's, I mean, there's a little bit of interesting stuff with the French and with the natives, but other than that, it's. Uh, it's mostly, yeah, the American is way more bloody and therefore interesting. All right. Well, speaking of blood, we've got number five for Omar here. Athletics and science c- 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 combo. Athletics, something I'm really known for. That, that's great. There are three current NFL teams named after omnivorous animals other than humans. What are they? <sighs> okay, let's see. There's the Panthers. No, yes. There are three current NFL teams named after omnivorous animals. Omnivores. Right. They eat both meat and 
vegetables. Oh. Mm, let's see. I should get a bonus for that one. Let's see. So <laughs> for, if for I say what? the Giving Patriots, away the question? if I say the Patriots, that counts as an omnivore. No, because the question <laughs> said other than humans. Oh, oh. oh that's, that's a human too. Oh. Okay, yeah. so it rules out cowboys. And <laughs> Patriots only eat red meat. We know that. Let's see, there's the Falcons, but those just eat meat, I guess. Let's see, Panthers, the Bears, uh, but the. Ooh, you have bears. The that's bears, one of the right? Three. I will give you the point if you can get one of the other two. Well, the Vikings are the dolphins would eat meat because there's a lot of birds, but but I think all of them are carrion birds. They they all eat meat. Are there birds that eat meat and berries? Oh, so I'm gonna guess uh, what the ravens? There you go. Okay, we've got the bears, the cards, and the ravens. Wait a minute, are, are giants omnivores? <laughs> <laughs> And the submitter of this question actually said the Buffalo Bills, but Buffalo is a city, so it doesn't really qualify. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Had to rule that one out. Number six. Uh, Omar gets that point, by the way. Number six goes to Row, mm-hmm. and the category is health. Oh, Jesus Christ. Which of the following is not an adverse effect of cocaine? Okay. Anxiety, paranoia, restlessness, tremors, convulsions, increased hair growth, increased body temperature, itching, tachycardia, hallucinations, or paranoid delusions. Okay, so things that Charlie Sheen does not suffer. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of symptoms usually, so I was trying yeah. to run through them. I was like... You want me to run through them again? Yes, please. Which of the following is not an adverse effect of cocaine? Anxiety, paranoia, restlessness, tremors, convulsions, increased hair growth, increased body temperature, itching, tachycardia, hallucinations, or paranoid delusions. I'm going to say, so there's multiple, there's more than one answer, correct? You said, which of the following? There's only one out of those. I want to say increased hair growth. You are winning. Yes. Yes. I would have said that as well. (laughs) That is DNA! That makes sense, because like Charlie Sheen and all those guys who do cocaine, they're losing their hair. Yeah. And and by winning, I mean that you're all tied. With one. (laughs) As as, as Kevin said, we win together, we lose together. Yes. Number seven goes to Kevin. It's literature, Kev. Literature. Okay, we got a shot. First published in March 1900, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz is a children's book with political and economic underpinnings. By what author? Oh, um, it's like Baum or something. Bonham? Bon, Bono? No. Helen Bonham Bonham Carter? <laughs> yeah, Helen Bonham Carter. Uh, is it like... Am I am I am I zeroing in on this at all, Mister Quizmaster? You are. I can tell you who directed it. Yeah. <laughs> Judy Garland. I couldn't tell something. you either. Let's go. Is it like? Uh, is the last name just Bomb? If we're going by Jeopardy rules, the last name is going to be enough. So you get a point. Woo-hoo. It is L. Frank Baum. B A U M. I knew there was a letter in there too. Yep. Uh, number eight. History goes to Omar. Yay. <laughs> It's American history or history history? Oh, it's going to be from America, all right. (laughs) Sorry. And I know that this is your specialty. Hit me. The second through seventh presidents of the United States all had first names or surnames starting with what common letter? The what from the what? The first through seventh presidents. No. The second second through seventh seventh presidents all had first or surnames starting with what letter in common? What's the surname? The the first names or last names? Okay, I know Thomas Jefferson is one of those, right? Yes, he, he was, is. One he was the, the third. Mm-hmm. We talked about one of them. That's going to be in Photo Friday. Come on. Problem is, I'm thinking George Washington as well, but they they don't. George have was any... the first. Oh. Yeah. So remember, we're only talking number two through number seven. Okay, I'm going to say J because I see more Johns there. I'm J. J is the correct answer. Yes. Yeah. Thomas nice. Jefferson was, was one of them, right? He was. He was the third president. So uh, starting with the second, you've got John Adams. Third is Thomas Jefferson. Fourth was James Madison. Fifth was James Monroe. Sixth, John Quincy Adams. And uh, seventh, Andrew Jackson. Yeah, I thought they were all going to be like Johns. All shared J's. Mm. Number nine, going to Roe. Yes. I'm so glad that you're getting this one. Oh, God, please let me math. <laughs> no, it's grammar. 
Son of a bitch. And poor Ro, you know, whenever I see your tweets, I always kind of want to send them back to you with red ink. Oh, Whoopsies. <laughs> no. I'm no so the... English. <laughs> <laughs> the topic is grammar. What class of modifiers are used to express spatial relations for nouns and verbs? Or as my wife would say, they tell where a cat can go. To hell? No. <laughs> no, I love cats. So, what class of modifiers? Mm-hmm. Over, under, in, out. Uh, type of modifiers. Thank God I didn't get this. Oh, God, I hate grammar so much. Some of the very most common words. Pre- it's not a preposition or anything, is it? It is. Oh, it is? <laughs> yep. Yay. You got it. Woo-hoo. Prepositions. Around. <laughs> About, above, over, under, between, besides, hmm. anywhere a cat can go. Nice. And, and does you, why, why, why does your good lady have uh, occasion to say this quite often? She's a teacher. Oh, well, that would be expected. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Fifth grade. That's what she does. Bless her. We should get her on here. <laughs> whip our arses. She's afraid of you nerds. Yeah, she has reason to be. <laughs> Kevin. Yes, sir. Your category is history again. Okay. And, you know, maybe maybe Omar should have gotten this one. Because everyone knows that Christopher Columbus, or Cristobal Colon, to Omar. Kind of botched that, but okay. <laughs> did I did I butcher it? Yeah, just a bit. How, how would you say it? Cristobal Colon. That's what I said. <laughs> right. No, you didn't. <laughs> Christopher Calbron. <laughs> everyone knows that Cristobal Colon <laughs> sailed with his men on the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Nina. But what are the names? That's what I said. But what are the names of the three ships that brought settlers to establish the first permanent English settlement in Jamestown, Virginia, in 1607? I think I know Uh, that one. Is that the Mayflower? Yes. No. The Mayflower would have been Boston, not Virginia. Very far apart. I'm going to tell you what, if you can get any one of the three ships, you'll get the point. Uh, In Virginia. That was like, what's his name? The doodah guy. Uh, I don't think the so. Duda oh. guy. Omar. Downtown races, Duda. No, Duda? I, I was yeah. gonna say the Mayflower as well. So no, apparently the Mayflower is the wrong answer. Omar, Jason's yeah. gonna screw us again. You know, it's only like I don't know, like seven hundred miles apart. Dude, that's like nothing up here. <laughs> My neighbor's seven hundred miles from me, except it's in kilometers. All right, you're gonna have to do this. <laughs> The three ships are... I'm sorry, that kilometer joke was funny. <laughs> the three ships are the Godspeed, the Discovery, and the Susan Constant. Those are stupid names. <laughs> it should be like the Enterprise, the Voyager, and the... Uh, Deep Space Nine. You know, something, yeah. Runabout. Uh, going on, though, here to Omar. Your category is government. <laughs> no, don't panic. You've got this. Okay, okay. Name three of the five basic freedoms guaranteed by the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Oh. Okay. You've got this in the bag. Okay. So, freedom of speech is the first one, right? Indeed. Uh, religion? Correct. Well, religious expression, yes. I have to name how many? Just one more. There's five of them in that First Amendment. Okay, so... Because there's something like... There's religion... It's politic, political, like like speech, but that's on freedom of speech, right? Correct. Freedom of press is the same one as freedom of speech, right? No, that is another one. That's of another them. one. Good job. Yep, that's three. Okay, what was was the other two? Uh, the, uh, the right to assembly yeah. and the right to petition. Huh. So you can get together and you can ask your your uh, your leaders for things for stuff. Huh. Good job, you got your three fists. That puts you ahead of the pack. Yes. You've got three points. Kevin Rowe only have two. Rowe can tie with this because she's got another grammar question. <laughs> God wah, damn it. Wah. In the following sentence, Rowe, mm-hmm. what is the correct spelling of the word two? Okay. Which you often misspell in your tweets. Of two? I would like two pizzas and a blowjob, please. <laughs> two, that would be T W O. That is correct, okay. and now you'll never forget it. I, when you know you're what? It, it happens. I'm okay. This is me. Typing, this is me typing on the internet while I'm at work because I'm like trying to like alt tab a bunch and like my mind is on a million different things, and 
I'm very ADD when I'm at work, so some, I'll forget what I'm saying, and then I'll pause, and then I'll come back to what I'm typing, and I'll be totally messed up. Hey, Ro, can I ask you a, a question? Sure. Is, uh, is, is English your parents' both first language? No, it's not. Tagalog? Tagalog. And is that how you say Tagalog it? Tagalog is my mother's native um, language, and my father is Chamorro, because he's from Guam. Cool. Mm-hmm. And and do you speak either of those? No, I only know cuss words, and when they're yelling at me, I know only know when like they're saying mean things to me when they're angry. That's all I know. Oh, bless. <laughs> it's the language of hate for you, <laughs> <laughs> Kevin. Uh, hello. We've got you with some uh, uh, some history and the arts c- 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 combo. C- 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 combo. Okay. Go you for it. always do so very well with U.S. president questions. Well, okay. Go ahead. What play was being performed at Ford's oh, Theater the God. night that John Wilkes Booth assassinated President Abraham Lincoln? I, I don't know, man. Let me just take a moment here to speak to the ethnocentrism of this here podcast and say how we, the Canadian white man, are being oppressed every day on this here podcast. <laughs> we go through things as well, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, what play? Okay. Uh, you gotta give me a hint, man. Give me a hint. What, uh, what, you what? might say that the title of this play, well, the content is not, but the title could very well be a descriptor of uh, America's relationship with Canada. Oh, it was Booze and Buddies, wasn't it? Booze and Buddies, <laughs> the play. No. Uh, where, where, you know, they had cross-dressing and all that. No, it's called I Lost the... My Hat. <laughs> or Have You Seen My Hat? I Want My Hat I Back. I Want My Hat Back. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the name of the play is Our American Cousin. Hmm. Oh, bless. It's probably Our American Special Cousin. <laughs> wow 14 okay. goes to Omar and we're talking about vocabulary okay okay I, I, can, I can probably I don't know go ahead I think that you can do this I think you can because all you have to do is tell me which of these is not a real word okay verisimilitude pedaflop or gryption pedaflop no dude that's a computing term yeah it is sorry no, that's a Petaflop. No, you got megaflops, gigaflops, petaflops. A petaflop is a measure of computer processing speed. A thousand trillion floating point operations per second. It was the third one, then. Yeah, it's Gryption that we were looking for. Mm. So, sorry, Omar. This actually gives Ro a unique chance here. Ro so never wins, but she has a chance to pull ahead right now. We're talking about literature, Ro. Oh, okay. Did you ever read any Mark Twain books? Nope. Not even The Adventures of Tom Sawyer? No, I watched the cartoon. Hello. <laughs> you might know this one. I might. Uh, it, it's risen to the level of folklore. But uh, in The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Tom convinces his friends to pay him for the privilege of doing what chore? Hmm. He cons them into doing what? Oh my god, this is probably in the animated series or something like that. Or him. A, there was Wasn't there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there an animated series of some sort? The I animated series. I think you're thinking of Batman. <laughs> <laughs> no, of Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn or something like that. There was something. The I next don't know. generation. <laughs> <laughs> For doing what? Okay, so they paid him to do a certain chore. Obviously, it's something that he hated, but there his friends were dupes, and they might have thought it was cool. It's probably the or one of one of the two or three most iconic scenes from the book. Oh my god! I. I know if you tell me, I'd be like, oh yeah, but I can't think yeah. of it. It's like he, he conned them into whitewashing fences for him. Oh, yeah. Gosh darn it. Yep. Did he do that by promising to teach them kung fu? <laughs> <laughs> no, he just did that reverse psychology thing where he was like, yeah, only cool kids get to whitewash the fences. Yeah, there's, a, there's, there's an anime series that's on Hulu. Ooh, right. Anime and whitewash the fence wasn't some sort of racial undertone thing. Where's Urban Dictionary when you need it? <laughs> Kevin, here's your chance in the category of health. Okay, man. Health is what I'm all about. What is the largest bone, do not say penis, in an adult human's body? I know this one. The largest bone. Largest. I'm thinking, well, it depends how you define hardest. Probably femur, but maybe skull. 
femur is correct. The skull is actually 22 distinct bones. Okay, femur. Yeah, I'm going with femur. That was always my guess. <laughs> femur was right. Everybody's tied at three. Woohoo! Good job. Omar, you're number 17. Geography. Okay, okay. Diamond mines can be found at Kimberley in what nation neighboring Namibia, Zimbabwe, and Lesotho? Sierra Leone? Dude, no, no. See, the real clue here is Lesotho. Because Lesotho <laughs> only borders one nation. Uh, I don't know. Um, South Africa? South Africa is right. Yes? Hey. Lesotho is entirely enclosed by South Africa. Really? It's a little circle inside of South Africa. It's the only nation on Earth like that. See, I didn't even know that Lesotho existed. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> How does that work? Um, I think it's viewed like kind of like a protectorate, but I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. But number 18 goes to Ro. Okay. Ro, Omar's leading you by one. You gotta catch up. I'm trying. We've got music. Okay. What German composer and harpsichordist was born March 31st, 1685 and penned the Brandenburg Concertos and Toccata and Fugue in D minor? I know that. That would be... I know that. Um, Bach. Yes. Johann Sebastian Bach. That is nicely correct. Done. Very nicely done. Mm -hmm. Very impressed. Yes, that's what I get for being a band. Yeah. Classical music has never been my strong point, but you did very, very well there. I remember those things. Kevin... Hello. Literature again. Okay. Uh, just the way that the dice fell with the randomizer. What Newbery Award winning book by Madeline Lengel tells how Meg Murray rescues her father from a telepathic dictator on the planet Kamazaz? <laughs> but what the what now? <laughs> okay, let me just say in Canada, like where we got the proper schools, we do the Shakespeare, okay? Yes. Like one every year, and then you do like extras for electives. So I've got like seven Shakespeare's all up my yin yang. So I don't know about this planet Telazari and <laughs> whatever. Okay, come on, give me that question again. This is actually a very, very popular uh, book for grades three, four, and five because it is a science fiction novel, and it is up to literary standards. And uh, I think it was written in the 70s, 60s, maybe somewhere in there. But at any rate, it, it does help a lot of kids get into reading, uh, find a, an interest in other literature. And it certainly sparked my interest. It's a very, very famous novel. What Newbery Award-winning book by Madeline Langle tells how Meg Murray rescues her father from a telepathic dictator on the planet Kamatsaz? That would be Highlander to the Quickening. Yes. <laughs> You're actually not worlds away. <laughs> there's there's some definite Highlander weirdness going on with uh, with with psychic stuff, but a wrinkle in time. Okay, is the answer we're going for. Anyway. Yeah, a wrinkle in time. Very very famous book. Number twenty. Not in my house, boy. <laughs> <laughs> we don't reads up here in Canada. <laughs> Omar, you're going for five points with this one in history. Oh. Which of these kings came first? Henry VIII, William II, or James I? That's a good question. Okay. Don't, don't let the first throw you off. I'm going to say actually the first, the, the third one you said. Henry VIII, William II, or James I? You're going with James, James the, the first. first. Oh, sorry, it was William II. Ah, yeah. Yeah, he oh, came yeah. significantly, several hundred years before. He was uh, the son of William the Conqueror, so he was... Around the 1066 Norman invasion, he was yeah. he was actually the first of the native Norman kings. We, we go England. we go for Spanish stuff, not not English stuff. He was probably gay. See, that's the kind of history we learned. None of this. What play was going on when so and so got shot <laughs> by someone? <laughs> and 21 row, mm -hmm. you're tied with Omar right now. Yes. I'm... If you get this, you win the game. <gasps> Wait, is and you will get question? it. Is it is oh, last shit. question. You will get it. Science. Don't say that, because that, you're jinxing me. No, there's no possible way you can't get it. Okay. In our solar system, mm -hmm. which of the gas giant planets is closest to the sun? I don't know that stupid acronym. <laughs> Even though I watched it <laughs> a million freaking times. It, it's a mnemonic device. <laughs> I know. Nablishnuf. That's like That was like the mnemonic device. To which one of the gas giants is closest? I, I, I'm going to say Jupiter. Oh, yes. it's not Saturn. No, no, it's Jupiter. I just don't want you to win. <laughs> yes! uh, wow. I'm back. Woo. 
<laughs> nice row. I tip my hat to you. I was doing a dance, just so you know. But... <sighs> so row wins. Why are you yeah. so upset that I win? That's not fair. Okay, row. This one's just for you, girl. Row is the champion, my friend. Don't. Do, 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 do. No, no. 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 We're going to take a quick ad break. And when we come back... Oh, man, I'm just so demoralized. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit about our middle school years. Very quickly. Because this show's already long. Masters of None. Hey, it's Jay from Masters of None inviting you to check us out. We're the comedy podcast that doesn't suck. Except for art. And Mike. And art. Totally. Dicks. Check us out at mastersofnoneshow.com. Or on iTunes. Masters of None. Masters of None. Hi everybody, Rich here. You know, one of the best things about Simply Syndicated is the great community of listeners we've got and all of the things you guys do to help us out. Something you could do that helps us spread the word about our shows is to let people know that you're listening on Facebook and Twitter. All our episodes have sharing buttons on them so you can tell your friends about us with just a few clicks of the mouse. Just visit our website at simplysyndicated.com and click the sharing buttons to help spread the word. So uh, we thought it would be interesting to real quick just cast our memories back to that 8th grade year and talk about what were the th- top three songs in rotation on the radio during that year. And of course, since we're uh, you know slightly different ages between the, the four of us here, there's going to be some different years that we talk about. Uh, Kevin, you're the oldest. Why don't you go first? Oh, yeah, rub it in, why don't you? But uh, no, if you want to know what uh, grade 8 was like for me in Canadian... The year was 1904. <laughs> no, dog. It was 1988, which is kind of cool because, you know, the year always went with my grade. So 88 was grade 8, 87 was grade 7, whatever. But, uh, yeah, if you want to know what our, our middle school was like, if you've seen Degrassi Junior High, that's like Canadian Junior High right there. Uh, but anyhow, yeah, you know what? It's like the year that I had the most time to listen to music. So I was looking at like the top 100 and I'm like, I know all of these songs. Whereas today I probably know like three, but, uh, the guys who had like the top songs, like, okay, let me just go down this list here. We got, uh, number one, Faith, George Michael. Number two, Need You Tonight, In Excess. Number three, uh, I Got My Mind Set On You, George Harrison. Number four, Never Gonna Give You Up, Rick Astley. Number five, Sweet Child of Mine, Guns N' Roses. <laughs> number six, So Emotional, Whitney Houston. Now... When you go over that list, like, it's kind of crazy what's happened to all of these guys since then. Because you got, like, George Michael arrested for lewd behavior. You got the guy from In Excess who died masturbating. You know, we don't talk much about that. George Harrison. We should. That, that's a way to go out. <laughs> that, that's a warrior's death right that's there. That's a way to go out. I'm sure. I, Worf would be proud. I don't want to say publicly that I think that's how Omar's going to go. But, <laughs> no, anyhow. <laughs> Uh, George Harrison, well, he's passed on, bless him. Rick Astley, we never thought we'd see Rick Astley again after 1988. And didn't that brother, didn't that brother come back with a vengeance? Guns N' Roses, you know, Axel is, like, kind of all messed up right now. Whitney Houston, you know, who expected her to die face down in a bath? But whatever, like, seriously, of all these people, Rick Astley has got to be the one who's come out like the hero. So never expected that in 1988. (laughs) Bless him. (laughs) So, anyhow, on to uh, someone else. I think I'm next, right? Yeah, but um, yeah. you went to 8th grade yeah. from 93 to 94, right? Yeah. And that's the time yeah, I so... went to 8th grade, so I'd have something different than yours. Oh, okay. All right. Well, the year was 1993 for me, for us. Mm-hmm. And Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You was number one. Is that right? Is that what you found? No, I found something different, but I'm not using oh, really? music. I'm using something else. Oh, but okay. I... Well, I, I, I was refusing to actually do Whitney Houston songs, so I looked up... <laughs> The, uh, the top three rock songs on the charts instead. So according to the Billboard Top 100 in 93, we had Daughter by Pearl Jam, Are You Gonna Go My Way by Lenny Kravitz, and Plush by the Stone Temple Pilots, which nice. I can live with those. those much much better than the pop crap. Very nice. Yeah. Me and Jason went at the same time. I did top shows based on Nielsen ratings in the United States. So the top, I'll say top four. For Cheers? Me. No, number one was 60 Minutes. Number two was Home Improvement. Three was Seinfeld. Four, Roseanne. I definitely watched... Two, three, and four. So yeah, there's also Grace Under Fire, Coach Frazier, ABC's Monday Night Football, Murphy Brown, and number ten CBS Sunday Night Movies. I watched... wow, I would have lost that rank and file. <laughs> yeah, I did not think Sixty Minutes would be that great because I never watched it. But then again, it makes sense. But I remember watching Coach a lot, Frazier and Murphy Brown. Definitely Murphy Brown. No, I love I love Murphy Brown. I didn't want to do the list because I saw just like the the, the regular top hundred hundred. It was like Elton John, Jewel, uh, Spice Girls, Hanson, Puff Daddy, Backstreet Boys, Meredith Brooks. What year did you go? 
What year were you in eighth grade? Like 19... 1997. What? I mean, the year really? of Umbop. Come on. He's the baby. Yes, whatever. Ah. But but the rock ones are, are actually kind of good. Because we have uh, Garbage, number one crush. That that song, by the way, is in heavy, heavy rotation on my iPod. I love that song. The, uh, the Romeo and Juliet soundtrack mix. Marcy's Playground, Sex and Candy. That one's good. Ah, yeah. Thump Thumping. <laughs> by Chumbawamba? Yeah, 1997 was filled with crappy music, dude. Like, extremely crappy music. Third Eye Blind, Semi-Charmed Kind of Life, Sugar Ray, Fly. <laughs> it was just crap, crap all around. I mean, Macarena. All the boy bands were, are here, like 98 Degrees, uh, Boys to Men, all that crap. They're not really a boy band, though. Boys to Men was not a boy band. They're a cappella group, one of the best. My wife gets turned on by some Boys to Men. Anyway, that ends this show. But thank you so much for joining me. It was fun to talk about some of that music, casting that memory back there. And I, I think that we did objectively prove that you guys are smarter than 8th graders. Yay. So congratulations. I mean, out of the 21 questions, you successfully answered 5, 9, 12 of them. So so, so better than 50%. That's, uh, you know, 12 out of 21. That's that's going on 65% or so. So good job, guys. Is that a D category or a C well, a 65 here would get you a D minus when I was in high school. <gasps> See you when you get there, Coolio. Number 66. Okay, we got to go before he has an orgasm. <laughs> but thanks, guys. Thanks to Omar, to Kevin, to Ro. We will see you next week. Later. Jason here saying, I want your questions. It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned pro or a first-time submitter. This is your chance to be part of the show. Send those geeky trivia bits to ATW9K at simplysyndicated.com today.